Hey guys, how's it going? So we're in the kitchen today and I wanna show you two different things. The first thing is how to grow sprouts, which is something I love to do and it's a great way to keep growing things year round, even when it's cold outside. And the second thing I wanna show you is a recipe that we love. It combines all the yummy fall and Thanksgiving flavors. It's a Thanksgiving turkey burger with cranberry mayo, but we need sprouts to finish the recipe. So that's what we're gonna start with today. And you can sprout all kinds of different things. There's alfalfa, which is what we're gonna sprout today, and that's my favorite. Several different kinds of beans, lentils, radishes. I've sprouted broccoli and cabbage before. Basically what we're doing is just sprouting seeds and getting them up to where there's just some really tender shoots and then you harvest them and use them as a replacement for greens like lettuce or spinach or incorporated with your lettuce and spinach. Um, so anyway, let me show you my setup. This is my setup right here. It's pretty simple. This is the brand of seed sprouter. I've been using this one for a lot of years. It is Botanical Interest Seed Sprouter. The reason I like this way as opposed to like sprouting in a mason jar is that it's set up really well to rinse the seeds, which is a huge part of sprouting. You have to rinse your seeds twice a day. Um, so let me get this apart here. The bottom layer is just a water catching tray and then it's got two sprouting trays that just rest one right on top of the other. So like today I'm gonna be putting a layer of alfalfa seed right here and then we'll put, be putting a second layer here and each tray has slits in it right here that water can run through. So I can lift both of these trays off and take it to the sink twice a day to do my rinsing and then just put it back right here. This tray will collect any excess water and actually this is the watering tray from the top. So I'll be taking all three of these layers to the sink. This is my alfalfa seed right here. This is organic sprouting alfalfa that I got down at my parents' garden center. You do need to soak your seeds for eight to 12 hours prior to putting them in your sprouter. The sprouting will happen a lot faster. So the first step I'm gonna have to do is put them in my uh, colander here. Is that what it's called? Strainer, whatever. And I'm gonna rinse them off really well and then we'll spread them out. This kit also came with an instruction guide, which is very handy. Uh, it has a chart in here. Let me see if I can get to it. It tells you how many tablespoons of seed you need based on what kind of seed you're using for a half a tray. So like alfalfa, which is the second one down, it says I need one tablespoon to fill half a tray. So total, I measured out four tablespoons of seed to fill up both of my trays. Okay, so I'm just grabbing my seed and my strainer and I'm gonna take it over to the sink here and we're gonna rinse. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour my seeds into my strainer and get the water going. So soaking these seeds prior to putting them in your sprouter um, kind of softens the outer shell of the seed and that's what speeds the process along so well. So now I'm gonna attempt to spread these wet seeds out in this sprouter. That's always the most fun part. Here we go. Okay, we'll start with the bottom tray first. All right, next tray. Oh boy, I did not judge half very well. So that looks just about perfect right there. I've got about half and half there. So I'm gonna put my water diffusing tray on the top and that's basically all I need to do until later on this evening. But I will show you quick how you do the watering through this top tray. And the rinsing is an incredibly important part. So you wanna do that twice a day. Like if you aren't home all day, just do it morning before you go to work and then when you come home at night, do it again. Um, and that's perfect just to keep them nice and moist. That way you don't let them dry out. So when you initially put your wet seeds in your sprouter, you don't need to right away rinse them. Like I would only need to do it this evening, but let me show you real quick. And I just have the water go at the center and then it just evenly goes out over the whole top of the tray and then it'll start running out the bottom here. And that's it, twice a day I have to do that until they're up. They're still nice and even. So it's nice about these. So depending on what seed you've chosen, it takes between two and seven days for them to be ready to harvest, which means you can start a brand new fresh crop of sprouts about once a week, and you can experiment with all kinds of different flavors, which is really fun. You can do a greens blend, or you can do some radish for a little extra bite. I tend to like to stick with alfalfa because it's the most mild and it doesn't tend to take over the flavors of my food that I'm eating. Like it, it lends that fresh green taste and that sprout taste, um, but it's not like a cabbage or a broccoli that like, you 
you can taste that there's broccoli in there and I don't really like to do that very often. Um, they need to be put in a spot with indirect light. They don't, don't need bright light like if you were growing an actual crop. I did read though in here somewhere, if you're growing mung, mung beans, they're best grown with minimal light to avoid bitterness. So there's your little tip. If you're growing mung beans, don't put them in a lot of light. So anyway, we will be back in two to seven days to share the recipe with you. Okay guys, it's been five days and the sprouts look awesome. Look at how awesome these look. That is amazing growth. Like it always just floors me that things grow this quickly and the root systems are insane. Uh, you can tell on this second level that it, the middle didn't get as much light. It's not as dark green, but that's okay. We'll use up pretty much this whole top layer and then this one will be bumped up toward the top and I can start a new crop in this one if I want. And you usually have several days that you can use these, that they stay good. You can pop them in the refrigerator to kind of lengthen that time out if you want. So I've got most of the ingredients out that we need to make our Thanksgiving turkey burgers, which I've been really looking forward to. I do need to run outside and grab the last couple of ingredients before we start. But before we do that, we did partner with Anilon on this video like we did with our last cooking video, and they've been a really wonderful partner to work with. I mean, we get to give away three roaster sets, which is so fun. And this is gonna be a quick giveaway, you guys, because we want whoever wins these roasters to have it in time for Thanksgiving. Let me show you what the roaster looks like. So this is it right here, 16 inches long, 13 inches deep. There is a rack that lifts up and out of the pan, and it comes with these forks right here to help you with the bird um, or whatever meat you're cooking. And then it also comes with a baster, which I have laying around here somewhere. Um, but every single surface in this thing is non-stick, which makes it really easy to clean. In fact, this is one of the pans I'm gonna be using today. This is a one and a half quart saucepan. And then my other pans that we'll be using are over here already on the stove. Look how efficient I am being. This is a 12 inch skillet with a helper handle right here so that you can lift it up with two hands. This one is a saute pan with also the helper handle. And then we have an eight and a half inch skillet. And all of these are from the Anilon Advanced Home Collection. It's super easy to enter this giveaway. All you have to do is like Anilon on Instagram and then comment below this video. So we are gonna be uploading this video on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So make sure you comment below the video on every one of those platforms. That way you have more of a chance to win because we will be picking one winner from each one of those platforms. Okay, so let's head outside. We need to grab onion, garlic, and an egg. So I've been keeping my onions and garlic out in the barn still because it hasn't been, like it's been cold, but it stays fairly decent inside the barn. And my stuff just keeps the best out here. And in fact, my onions are just about gone and whatever is left are starting to sprout because they're Walla Wallas. They have a really high sugar content and they don't keep for as long as some of the other varieties. Um, so we'll grab some of those. Then we have to go into the coop and grab an egg. Hopefully they've laid an egg today. <laughs> we'll see. So this is pretty much what's left of my onions. Then we'll grab a head of garlic as well. I had an automatic chicken door installed. Hey, hi sweetie. Have you laid me some eggs today? They don't lay in the nesting box I've given them. They lay up here in their bag of hay. So I think I've got pretty much everything I need for these burgers sitting right here on the counter. So let me go over what I'm gonna be using real quick. So for the turkey burger part, we're going to be preparing the stove top and we use a little bit of that in our turkey mixture, which this would be a great recipe to make right after Thanksgiving or any holiday that you're eating stuffing so that you already have it prepared. We're gonna use one pound of ground turkey, a third cup of cheddar cheese, two tablespoons of sweetened dried cranberries, we are also gonna be using the egg that we just gathered, and then some onion and garlic, which we are going to uh, brown. We're gonna saute those for a little bit. And then uh, we've got our sprouts and our brioche buns sitting there. These are so good. And then for our cranberry mayo, we are gonna be using mayo mustard, and then a little bit of cranberry sauce. Once you have all of your stuff gathered, which honestly doesn't take that long, the thing that takes the longest is getting the onions and garlic cut and sauteed. And I'm not gonna caramelize them because that takes forever, but I just wanna get some nice color on them and get them really soft. They give the burgers a really good flavor. I actually got this recipe on food.com. We'll link it down below, but I tweaked it. I added some things and sub subtracted some other things. Um, so we'll put my revised version also down in the comment section below so you can check that out because that's what I'm actually making today. So we're gonna get the onions and garlic on and get the stuffing 
cooking um, so that those two elements are done. And then we can actually start mixing our burger mixture. All right, so I'm gonna ever so professionally cut up my onion. We're just gonna let that heat up a little bit, then we'll add our onions. So I'm going to add my onions and I'm gonna let them saute in here. Is saute the word? I don't know, I'll let them cook in here for like five to seven minutes. So while these onions are cooking, and like I said, I leave them in for about five to seven minutes. In fact, I should probably sprinkle some salt in. Let me do that. Like a half teaspoon or something like that to taste. I am going to be making my stuffing. So I'm gonna multitask. So these are cooking, stuffing will be cooking, and then it'll all come together in the end. So I'm just following the instructions on this box. It says to bring one and a half cups of water with uh, anywhere from two tablespoons to four tablespoons of butter. I will use two tablespoons. Um, so you let those come to a boil in a pan and then you stir in the stuffing mix and then cut, cover it and let it stand for five minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. It's three quarters of a cup. And one more makes one and a half cups. The water and butter are on to boil. My onions are sauteing away. So as soon as that water comes to a boil, I'll add my stuffing mix, which you guys, I love stovetop stuffing. I know that there's some people who like, think it's sacrilege to eat anything but homemade stuffing, but I could eat this year round. Things are looking good. Remove from heat. All right, so everything is done and I took it off the stove, obviously. I've got everything sitting here for the burgers and I just wanted to run over the ingredients one more time. So I've got my onion and garlic, half cup of stuffing, a third cup of grated sharp cheddar cheese, two tablespoons of dried sweetened cranberry, one pound of ground turkey, and one egg from my very own chicken. So now I'm gonna mix all of these things in this bowl together along with some salt and pepper, probably about a teaspoon of that and about a half teaspoon of pepper. Um, and I'm just gonna use my hands for this. I did just wash them. This is what they do on the professional cooking show sometimes. <laughs> is that grossing you out, Erin? <laughs> I've got my burger mixture all done. And so now really there's only three things I need to do. I need to cook the patties, which you just form them however big your buns are and then make them as thick as you want. So of course, if they're thicker, they're gonna take longer to cook. I tend to like thinner patties. So I'm just gonna make them about the size of my brioche bun here and then maybe about three quarters of an inch thick or so. And so usually it takes about three to four minutes on each side of the patty um, for them to cook. And then I'm gonna be buttering these buns and toasting them in a saucepan, saute pan. And I still need to make my sauce. So while all of these things are cooking on the stove, I'm gonna go over and make my cranberry mayo. Oh, I think I can fit about four in this pan. I'm just gonna do three. <laughs> that way I don't crowd things too much. All right, so I'm gonna get a little layer of butter, put on these buns and get them in the pan. Two and a half tablespoons of mayo, two and a half tablespoons of cranberry sauce, and a half teaspoon of mustard. We're gonna mash all this together. Okay, that's good to go. All right, things are looking good. I think I'm gonna give these just one more minute and then I'll flip them. Let's check the buns out. Starting to feel a little crispy. So I'm getting ready to flip these patties and I've made these several times, but the last time I made them, I had a hard time flipping them. So this is a moment of truth. Oh, perfection. Look at that. So that's actually perfect. You kind of want to have a crispy crust on these and make sure that the turkey is cooked all the way. And the darker spots there are the dried cranberries. All right, so these are all done. So I'm gonna take them out and put them on a plate and then we'll get our brioche buns out and we can start assembling. Those are looking perfect. So assembly is really easy. All you do is you've got your toasted bun here and then we're gonna take one patty, put it on the bun, a little bit of cranberry mayo, spread it out there. And then we're gonna to top it up with a little bit of sprouts. Isn't that a pretty burger? 
So I'm gonna assemble this last one and then I'm gonna go grab Aaron. He's kind of been in and out of here, but we're gonna both give him a try. Why did I grab a fork for this? I need a spoon. Hey Aaron, they're all done. You ready to try this out? Yes. You can choose which one you want. Which one has a thicker patty? <laughs> this one is good. You gonna film me while I eat it? Yes. Oh, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> I do. Mmm. It's good. Is it tasty? Mm-hmm. As tasty as the last time I made them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, my turn. Actually really good. Mm-hmm. You got surprised. Well, the sprouts aren't even bad. I would actually order this if it was in a restaurant. Mm-hmm. This is good, Benjamin. I bought extra brioche buns this time so that we could have multiples. <laughs> Seriously, these are so tasty, you guys. Hi, baby. How was your nap? Hi, sweetheart. Want to try a bite? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he just woke up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love you, baby. So that's it, you guys. That's how you make a Thanksgiving turkey burger. And I highly suggest you give it a try because it's so, so tasty. Erin and I were just talking about how we would order that at a restaurant if that was an option on the menu. Um, and the sprouts are perfect. So the alfalfa is my favorite. Like I said earlier, because they don't overwhelm any other flavors, they just complement it. So I hope that you both give the recipe a try and try growing sprouts. And let me know if you do. Um, I would love to know your opinion. So, oh, also don't forget about the giveaway. Make sure to like Annalon on Instagram and then comment below our video on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram for your chance to win a roaster set. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.